Well, Nancy's come home with another hot pepper. This one's called a Carolina Reaper. We'll talk about that. We'll be right back. Oh, welcome back. When you talk to people that like hot peppers and you're going to get a thousand different opinions on who's got the hottest pepper. And if you ask me, I don't know. I don't have a clue. I hear all kinds of stories about what's hotter. I think it all depends on the individual to tell you the truth. But this one here is advertised to be 190 times hotter than a jalapeno. I can't even imagine putting something like that in my mouth. Nancy looks forward to it. Whew. Okay, so she wanted me to grow some and try them. They're called the uh, Carolina Reaper, and um, here's what the, the here's a little bit better picture of them right here. I don't know if can you see that? Okay, now that's what they look like. So they're not a real big pepper, and uh, Nancy said it's listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as the hottest pepper in the world but who knows how up to date that is and in my opinion it all depends on whose mouth you're putting it in but anyway we started some seeds here's where they're at they're, they're really not ready to come outside yet they're still in underneath the grow light in the house so we'll let these stay inside for a few more weeks until they get up a little bit more matured and we'll harden them off and we'll put them out in the earth garden and then let Nancy enjoy all she wants so we'll see you back and uh, yeah, it'll probably be a few weeks ahead. But we'll be back shortly to show you the progress of these these hot boys. Have a good one. Here's our Carolina Reapers. They're uh, they've emerged and they've they've come up and they're they're going they're pretty slow growers. So what I'm gonna do is give these another a week or so and then I'm gonna transplant them into a little bit bigger cups and see if I can't uh, get those things up bigger and uh, ready to transplant as soon as the weather gets a little warmer so we'll be back shortly as soon as I get them transplanted okay I got my little Carolina Reapers transplanted into a little bit bigger cups I'm gonna harden these off on the uh, hardening table and we'll be back in about a week week and a half and um, we'll get these in the earth garden so we'll be back shortly Our Carolina Reapers have been out here on the hardening table. They've hardened off and they're ready to go. I need to get them out of these cups. I transplanted them into these little old flower cups, but um, they're ready to go in the ground. So I'm going to get those started today out in the earth garden. So Nancy's going to put a little link at the end of this video on how to grow sweet peppers. It shows you step by step how I use the fish, the bamboo stakes, the cage, how to put it in the hole, all that. So go watch that video because the way I plant my sweet peppers and the way I plant my hot peppers are exactly the same. So go look at that video. We'll be back after these are in the ground and we'll watch these as they progress up until we start to harvest those, those, uh, those peppers and Nancy makes herself some hot sauce for a barbecue sandwich. So we'll be back shortly. Well, I got the Carolina Reapers put in the ground and uh, it's been a real cool spring but the last couple of days we actually had some hot weather. Today is 90 degrees so Carolina Reapers love that hot weather so they're off and running and I think in the days ahead you'll start to see them really get some good traction so let's take a look at what the plants look like. I just got the four in and uh, we'll be back shortly and uh, we'll take a look at them again as they, as they start to grow. Be back in a couple weeks. And the Carolina Reapers are really making some progress so I was going to give you a little sweep down the, down the uh, four plants and let you take a look at them. Um, they're starting to develop the fruits. They're still green but they're on their way to turning red. As soon as they turn red I'll be able to make some pepper spray to deal with the evil squirrels and the evil rabbits around here. 
Um, so let's take a look up close and take a look at what these fruits look like. Well, the plants look um, nice and bushy. I topped these plants before I put them in to, to help them to, um, to bush out. Let's see if I can get this pepper right here. So we'll be back in the days ahead few more weeks ahead and we'll look at these peppers as they turn red and when they get red they're ready to make some pepper spray for the evil rabbit and the evil squirrels so we'll see you then well our Carolina Reapers have uh, started to uh, mature and uh, we, we're starting to get some that are ready to use and uh, they're they're turning red so today I wanted to um, pick some and show you a little bit about them and explain to you about the the heatness level of these things it's very difficult for me to get the camera up in here and show you what these look like so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to cut off a little um, a branch and show you some so let me grab some of them for you Here's a branch that I just cut, and you can see that it is it's loaded with the green ones. And then they turn down here to the different color. They get red, orange, and red being the last color. They turn red, and when they're red, buddy, they are scorching hot. So let's go over to the um, harvest table and take a close-up look at these and see if we can learn a little bit about the heatness level on these things. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is how to measure the heatness on hot peppers. Now, if you talk to any of these pepper heads that are knowledgeable about the heat index or the heat unit or the Schofield scale, you'll always hear them talking about what that measures on the Schofield scale. And really, that's nothing more than just a measure of the pungency or the spicy heat of a chili pepper. And it was um, developed by Wilbur Schofield in 1912. Now it's not high precision, highly accurate, but it's accepted worldwide as um, the scale that everybody works to when they're um, measuring how hot something is, and uh, especially hot peppers. They even use it in hot spicy foods as well. The first one I want to talk about is when you talk about the Schofield Heat Index or the heat unit or SHU is a lot of people, they don't know what you're talking about and they can't relate to it because they don't have a baseline to work to. So I wanted to start off with one today that everybody's probably familiar with. At some time or another, you've always, you've probably all eaten a um, jalapeno pepper at one time and they taste great and they do have a Schofield heat unit of 5,000. So there are 5,000 SHUs for a jalapeno. So remember, you have probably tasted a jalapeno sometime in your lifetime and you know that rascal's pretty hot. So remember, it measures a 5,000. The next one when I, I wanna graduate up to is the one that Nancy loves the best. It's the Korean gochu. This pepper, it comes in at a whopping 30,000 SHU. As you can see, it's quite a bit hotter than a traditional jalapeno. But this is the main staple of all Korean dishes. It all starts with some gochu peppers. Give it a little kick, 30,000. The next one I wanna talk about is the Chinese five color. Beautiful pepper, you've seen us grow these before. But the Chinese five color, she rolls in at 50,000. Pretty hot. I'm telling you, it's, it's more than I can eat, that's for sure. But it's pretty good pepper and uh, Nancy likes them. She's, she's making some hot sauce and things with it. So she enjoys it, I'm just too tender. Then we come up to the big old Cal 
Carolina Reaper. This is a powerful, powerful pepper. It comes in at 1,569,300 on an SHU. It's the current 2017 Guinness World Book of Record holder for the world's hottest pepper. And of course, you can talk to a lot of people and everybody will say, well, it's not as hot as this, it's not as hot. And to me, it's all a matter of taste. How does it taste to you? But take a look at this pepper. You can see the classic scorpion tail it's got on it. And to me, that's scary enough just looking at that. This one right here is perfectly ripe. It's that the, the color that you want to look for, that red orange color it gets. It's got that scorpion tail on there. And buddy, you better believe that rascal can light you up. Here's another one. Nice specimen. Here they are. This is what they look like when they're green. You see the scorpion tails forming on them. See there, here they are at, an, at another. This is uh, actually when it gets, this is the first color. It'll go to this as it ripens further. This is where you want to get it to where you're getting the seeds out of it to save for next year. But right here, this is a hot pepper. And I really can't imagine eating that. I don't recommend eating it to anyone. You know, some of these pepper heads, they love these things and it goes well in some of their cuisines. I will give you a word of warning. If I use this to make pepper spray to detour uh, raccoons out of my melons so they don't bother my melons. It didn't take but a couple of bites of that and they decide they're not going to eat melons anymore. But um, when you're using this in a pepper spray, you always want to wear protection to, like gloves to protect your hands. You want to wear long sleeves. You want to wear eye protection. So when you're spraying, always spray where the spray is flowing downwind away from you so it doesn't blow back into your eyes because your eyes can absorb this stuff really fast and it, man does it hurt and um, you don't want to get it on your skin neither because it soaks into your skin and uh, you can't wash it off it just eats you alive so be very careful handling this and spraying it and you don't want to spray it around pets and definitely don't want it around children so be careful with this if you're going to use it now, here we're talking about 1.5 million on the SHU. And just thinking about the uh, police grade pepper spray. Police grade pepper spray is 5,300,000. So you can compare that to your Carolina Reaper at 1 million. So, you know, it's getting pretty hot, but uh, this tells me that when a police officer tells me to stop what I'm doing or they're going to uh, discharge some pepper spray, I think the best policy at that point would be always compliance and not defiance and avoid getting this stuff on you. So I don't think anything about police grade pepper spray would be pleasant. So there you go with the, um, the uh, Carolina Reapers. Uh, thank you. I hope that you learned a little bit about this today and enjoyed the video and if you like our videos uh, I ask you to subscribe to our channel and be a part of our YouTube family so until me and Nancy see you next time always remember by his hands we are fed give us Lord our daily bread amen Thanks for watching our videos. We really love making them. If you like our videos, please like our Facebook page to get the latest tips and tricks. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to get the newest video. Like it. It would really inspire and encourage us. But most importantly, share it to encourage others. We'll welcome your comments and questions. Thank you. Have a blessed day.